Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark. Thank you all again for coming back to look at more of the content that I'm putting out there. It means a lot. And if you could subscribe, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know if you're enjoying the content or not. That would be fantastic. As you'll have seen from the thumbnail, today's video is a look at some new build wiring. And we are going to go out onto site and have a look at what we found. I'm going to talk through it. Um, I had to do a, a voiceover on it because there was some other construction works going on. It was just too noisy. So I've come back and overlaid some audio on top of it and hopefully that makes sense to you. You know, it's better to talk about what we've actually found on site whilst we're there than me sit waffling about it now. But before we go to that, I wanted to just have a very brief chat about um, new build in general. Uh, how how are you guys seeing it? If you get involved in the comments and let me know, we've all been out onto new builds now and, and seeing what's going on, especially with installing EV charge points. Um, so, you know, there's the... There's some issues there, I would say. We've certainly found something here. And just to give a very brief overview of what we've found, so we've got the typical arrangement of a consumer unit in the middle of a new build house and all the issues of doing that. I don't understand why designers choose to do that because it makes additions and modifications really difficult for electricians later on and the homeowners because generally it involves pulling more stuff apart than you would need to if you'd put that consumer unit in a more sensible position. Uh, and especially when they're choosing to, to take the consumer unit and put it under the stairs in the middle of the house, which makes even less sense to me as well in light of um, recent guidance within the regulations to do with consumer units under the stairs, be it of plastic or metal construction. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, but that's a separate issue in itself. This particular problem is to do uh, mainly with the sub-main between the meter cabinet and then down to the um, consumer unit. So as you'll see in the video, we have kind of a, um, an arrangement where the tails come out of the meter into a Wilex 100 amp switch isolator for the tails, and then it drops down in some 16 mil single insulated conductors to a Hager enclosure with a Wilex double pole C63 MCB. Um, and then we have the steel wire armor cable coming off that with a clamp on it that you would typically find in street lighting. So I've seen those before where they're in kind of a separate enclosure within a street lighting column. So they aren't just out, you know, on, on display within the um, column itself. As you take the lid off, there is a separate enclosure in there for them. Uh, I think they are specific for that environment. It's not something we would consider using in a meter cabinet, but again, let me know in the comments what you think to that, if that's an acceptable way of landing a steel wire armor cable into an enclosure. Um, uh, equally, again, the way the earth arrangement is straight into the service head and you need to have a look at that on the video and see what you think. Regardless of all of that though, there's a couple of other issues. One is going back to the consumer unit in the house, so we, we went and had a look in there as well and the steel wire armor cable is stripped back into the cavity of the, the wall. Uh, there's no attempt to gland it into the uh, consumer unit at all. There's no SPD in there. Um, some of the conductors are overstripped if I'm being a little bit fussy with, with uh, my observations. But again, I just wondered what you thought. Is this typical of what's going on in new build? Is it to be expected? Who's actually looking at the quality of this? Is it all on the developers at the end of the day? Do they need um, improvements with their site managers and clerks of works, for example? Should the CPSs be getting more involved in what their contractors are, are putting out as work? You know, these, this is, these are large estates and every house on that estate is exactly the same. Um, you know, what's what's the what's the actual solution to that problem? Is it a problem? Am I being too fussy? You know, I'm someone who prices these works and I've been told several times when we've tendered for them were too expensive, not just a little bit too expensive, several times too expensive. And it kind of gets you thinking, you know, are we pricing these wrong? Are we out of touch with modern methods of wiring up homes? When they're saying that first fix and second fix is done a day each and there's only a couple of people on site, they're not big crews in there doing it. Um, you know, is it unrealistic, our time frames, are we the ones who are getting this wrong? Or are the shortcuts been taken um, in the materials that are used and the installation practices that are carried out and, and because they know that they're not really getting checked up on? Um, we, we can see with EV actually where we get these um, anonymous audits that have been taking place. We had the report come out quite recently where they've been and had a look at a lot of installations and found issues. Especially with new build, I don't see a reason why the CPSs couldn't do a bit of that. You don't have to make arrangements with the clients. You can just have developers um, in the know that when a certain percentage of properties are finished, you are going to send in um, either some of your approved contractors or your area engineers to go and have a look and see what, just at random, what's actually gone on. And I think contractors knowing that, all of a sudden, 
that transforms everything because the work's been checked and not cherry picked checked. It's been checked uh, in a way that they can manipulate. Um, to me, that seems like a good idea. Um, equally, again, tackling the problem at its root cause, which is get better trained apprentices, um, qualified as electricians who are going to do the job right in the first place. But that doesn't take away the, the business aspect of it, of people who will always be there saying, oh yeah, we can do that for 1,500 quid. I don't know what he's talking about, wanting, wanting all that money for that job. And usually clients aren't educated enough to know the difference, in my opinion. But again, this is a question to you. This is like, what do you think? Am I out of order here in my opinions on that? I don't want to be coming across as bashing other electricians and showing crappy rubbish work just for the sake of likes and views and and all the rest of it. Um, this is a genuine question and it's one I'm not sure on the answer to and I've posed it on my other social media as well. I've asked the question about the, the pictures. You might have seen seen it on this particular install. But anyway, we'll go out to site and we'll take a look. Um, I'll run through it again. I've had to overlay the audio because it was very noisy on site. There was construction and road rollers running around. It was just too noisy. So I hope it comes out okay. Let me know what you think in the comments and um, catch up with you in a bit. Hi, so we're seeing the meter cabinet outside here. This is a new build, July 21, it was signed off. You've got the 100 amp main supplies fuse into the smart meter, 25 mil tails to the Wilex 100 amp switch, and that then drops through with single insulated conductors, 16 millers down into the um, Hager enclosure there with a Wilex main switch. So it's a C63 MCB, and um, you'll have noted the steel wire armor going off to the main consumer unit in the house. That's um, been terminated very uniquely and you'll see there they've made a great effort to cut out the plastic enclosure to get around all these cables. Um, I'm not impressed with the way that that's glanded. I, I know in street lighting it's pretty common that they use those types of clamps. Um, but yeah, it's not the best in my opinion. And yeah, as I said in the start of this video, we've kind of gone to install an EV charge point or at least quote to install one and yeah it's um you know where do you go from this because the consumer units in the middle of the house on that c63 we've got all this gear in here already and the way that that's been terminated it's just the thumbs down from me and we went and had a look inside as well and you'll see here in the uh, split load board we've got the steel wire armor again coming down and in it's stripped outside the back of the the board you can't really see it very well in this video but yeah, there's no attempt to gland it in at all. It's it's over strips so the single insulated conductors are actually outside the back of there. And uh, yeah, the actual wiring of the twin and Fs isn't awful. I've seen a lot worse. Uh, it's a little bit over stripped in places with more exposed copper than I'd like to see. And no fire seal on the back. But again, there's an argument for if that's needed or not with some people. I would like to see some attempt for it just with a little cavity there to the back. Uh, but the main concern was to do with that, that sub main down to this board which is under the stairs in the middle of the house. And uh, yeah, I would have preferred a much better arrangement of that submain to be totally truthful, because now we've got the headache of trying to figure out the best way of getting an EV charge point installed. And there's no SPD in there either. So that was disappointing to see. I'm sure it was designed to an early edition of the regs, but still, you know, for the cost um, and knowing the benefits, why not use one? I don't understand why that's been omitted. And I'll blank out the contractor's name here to avoid any embarrassment. I just wanted to show the dates. So it's July 21 that that's been signed off. Right, so hopefully that made sense and you've had a, a look through what we actually found. Um, now you've seen it, if you haven't already, get in the comments and let me know what you think. Um, we have got the, the fantastic issue of trying to sort that out and there is a solution. And we do have the issue of using the meter cabinet for um, our equipment. Efix made a great video on that just the other week and how a lot of the DNOs don't like it. But as, as you can see, that's already been done. There is equipment in there already. And to do something with that existing submain now without tearing apart the property would be quite difficult. Um, so for, for me, the simplest thing to do would be to remove everything that's in there, gland that steel wire armor cable properly into an appropriate um, consumer unit. We can then have a, a main switch inside there and we can go out on that, that sub-main to the consumer unit internal to the property with some appropriate overcurrent protection. Probably a fuse of some sort, because you know, you're then giving yourself some sort of chance of selectivity, discrimination between the MCBs internal to the house and what's in that meter cabinet. Because as I've shown on the test board in here, 
if you have a, a dead short fault, there's every chance that it's going to take out the MCB inside and the ones that are in the meter cabinet. And that's regardless if they are D, C or B types. You'll get some partial selectivity, but not enough for it to be reliable. So then you've got homeowners who are turning circuit breakers back on inside, expecting the power to come back on and it doesn't. And not just that, the power to everything's gone off because it's taken out the overcurrent protection in the meter cabinet. Um, so there's that consideration there. And usually a, a fuse is a good way to try and give yourself a fighting chance of having some selectivity. Um, and yes, yeah, so, so you've got that option. And then equally you can put the RCBO in that enclosure as well for the EV charge point. And I get the argument about putting things in the meter cabinets. In an ideal world, I would not ever suggest doing that um, at all. It's not something we would do on any of our installs um, by choice. But I am trying to find a solution for the actual owner of that property. And looking at it, I think that makes the best sense. Um, you know, we could say, well, let's cut another meter cabinet in adjacent to the ones there. But we're still going to have to have something in the cabinet that's there already. So why not make that a small consumer unit and avoid destruction of the rest of the building? Um, because the DNO don't like equipment being in there. If, if ever that is an issue in the future, then that extra meter cabinet can be, can be cut in. Um, the primary idea for me is to go back to the developer and make the problem theirs uh, because it is their problem. They're the ones who've installed it like that. Uh, we now want to install an EV charge point. We can't take it from the consumer that's in the house because we've only got 63 amps to play with there anyway. And getting a cable to there is going to be an absolute pig. So we're going to have to pull the building apart. Even if we could, you've only got the 63 amps. It doesn't work. Um, and then the other issue is what's in there, we can't really do anything with that to add an extra circuit on or or do anything with it. Um, so yeah, it's to put the ball back into their court before we interfere with it. But that would be my solution if I was to kind of suggest something to make it work, would be to just strip out what's there, put a separate little consumer unit in with a, a main switch for the entire installation, a fuse on the steel wire armor that's been correctly landed into that consumer unit off to the consumer unit in the house and then uh, type A RCBO going off to the uh, EV charge point which incidentally is just next to the meter cabinet it's literally next door um, that would be the best solution I think the neatest the simplest if you think different let me know in the comments um, we'll we'll discuss it um, share our ideas and again I'm I'm linking back to the eFix video and how DNOs don't want well they recommend not to put equipment in there other people have made a valid debate that their particular DNOs really aren't bothered. I know the area engineer local to me has no issue with it. Whether that's the policy of the DNO as a whole, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it's just, this is, this is the problem. What's the solution? What do you think? Get involved in the comments. Let's have a discussion around it. I'm not trying to suggest I'm smart ass. I don't want to go on about bashing that install. This is really of trying to find a way... Um, of getting an EV charge point in there that complies as simply as possible. Um, would you go to the trouble of a, an extra meter cabinet? Would you get a, a new sub-main to the consumer unit inside? Um, would you look at getting the EV back there as well? What, what would you what would you do it? Let's have a discussion. If, if you could all get involved in the comments, I absolutely love that. Any of you who've done it already will know I reply to absolutely everybody and I'll do the same on this as well, if, even if it's one person or if I'm lucky, 10. That would be brilliant. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think of the content. And um, I'm going to keep the videos coming as fast and fresh as I can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.